Not all stories have a happy ending. Thank you. He said to her, not for me, for the others. And then he died. This wasn't in a lab, no ivory tower, but a hospital in San Francisco, 1984. Not for me. And then he died. She had never met an actual patient before, even though she'd identified the disease just the year before, so when he asked to see her, she went, she saw. She understood. He was in terrible shape and had difficulty speaking. Thank you. He said, not for me, for the others. And then he died. Not all stories have a happy ending. Since that day, she said, I still have that image in my mind. He took my hand, and I still feel his hand in my hand today. People with the disease had heard that the virus had been identified at her lab at the Pasteur Institute, and they would show up, hoping. Celebrities, gay men, everyday people, they wanted to speak to the scientists who understood it, hoping. But discovering a disease and curing it are two different things. There was nothing she could do for them. She became friends with a number of these people and then watched as they died. The list is very, very long, she said. To see the patients dying and expecting so much from us, it was terrible. Not all stories have a happy ending. A battle ensued with an American lab that claimed to have discovered the disease first. She tried to ignore it, but it had consequences. Patients with little patients got angry. You're only interested in fighting with your colleagues. They would say. You're only interested in making money. You don't care about us. She was shocked. Devastated. Finally, 13 years after the discovery, a treatment. Antiretroviral therapy. Hope. But for her, severe depression. The constant stress of working on the disease, to have seen so many people die, and to realize that people were now able to live with the disease, the overwhelming relief, she simply fell apart. I look like a virus, she said. My face is like HIV. A year of depression. Not all stories have a happy ending. She fights because there are so many problems to overcome. Antiretroviral therapy isn't a cure. It just allows the infected patients to live with the disease, and only a third of them currently receive treatment. She fights for better access for the other two thirds. She fights to overturn laws that criminalize homosexuality in countries around the world. She fights for better sex education for children. She fights to decriminalize drug addiction and prosti prostitution. She fights. It is not enough to just sit in the lab and to do research, to publish and be done with your work. Having drive and conviction means that sometimes you must stand toe to toe with the powers that be. In 2009, when Pope Benedict said that HIV AIDS is a tragedy which cannot be overcome through the distribution of condoms, which even aggravates the problem. She was furious. So she wrote an open letter to him. This statement is contradicted by 25 years of scientific research, she said. Your declaration shows an unbearable cynicism, she said. Your rank allows you to consult the most eminent experts before speaking publicly, she said. This will stain your legacy, she said. He never responded and condom use in Africa dropped significantly after his speech. Not all stories have a happy ending. For over 30 years, her sole work has been on HIV. Yet even after all this time, the search for a functional cure is elusive, but she is convinced it is achievable. I am optimistic because I see things are moving forward. Of course, we have a long, long way to go. She said that if a cure and a vaccine for HIV can be found, that she would feel relieved and could retire in peace. Thank you, he said. Not for me. The others, waiting, hoping for science to finally figure this out. Chances are, Francoise Barre-Senussi will 
be there when it happens. Not all stories have a happy ending. Yet, Francoise Barre Sanusi, winner of the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for her discovery of HIV, 2008.